what's going on, guys? It's Brown and Men's Comics, and we are excited to present to you the next edition of the official CBSI Hot 10 Comics for the week of August 9th, 2019. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going on, buddy? Brian, I'm excited to be here. Very humbled to be presenting ComicBookInvest.com and Ben Stein's Hot 10 Comic List for this week. Last week was the first official Hot 10 on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. We're bringing the heat with the second one. I think the first one was a success. What do you think, Jack? Absolutely, Brian. We appreciate all the support and love we received from the community, and we are excited to bring the Hot 10 Comics list to you out in Simpleman's Comics fam and CBSI Nation on a weekly basis. Exactly like Jack just said. I can't thank people enough for all the comments and all the love they showed on the first week, and we promise each and every week we're going to bring the heat and we're going to get even better. But before we get into the list this week, we need to announce the winner for last week's giveaway, don't we, Jack? That's correct, Brian. Courtesy of Ben C., the owner of CBSI and ComicBookInvest.com, we have a silent partner exclusive Vampirella number one virgin variant by Kendrick Lim, a.k.a. Kunkka. Real quick, before I announce the winner, I want to thank everyone that participated. Bunch of great comments on the video. Made it really hard to choose just one. So to ease the burden on us, we took all those comments, all the people's names, put it in a list, randomized it and came out with the winner, which we will show on the screen right now. And we want to say congratulations to Barbarian Kung Fu. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of the episode, where today we're giving away not just one exclusive variant, but two. Again, courtesy of Ben C., the owner of CBSI and ComicBookInvest.com. Yes, so definitely thank you to Ben for providing those variants, which we will announce how you can win those towards the end of the show. But without further ado, let's get into the list, starting with the honorable mentions. And coming in at our first honorable mention this week is Captain America number one. This is a gorgeous golden age Marvel Comics classic that this week saw a sale of a 9.4 hit $915,000. That's right, $915,000. And that was for a 9.4. Can you believe, Brian? A 9.8 exists out there. I wonder what that would go for. I can't even put a figure in my head as to what I think a 9.8 would go for. And who has the money to buy comics like this? Because I have a hard time explaining to my wife when I want to buy a $300 comic book. But someone's got the money because they're selling. And kudos to whoever owns this book right now. And kudos to whoever sold this book. (laughs) Definitely. And coming in at our second honorable mention spot this week, we have House of X number two, The Flower Variant by Sarah Pacelli. This is a quintessential honorable mention book. This is a book that was available on New Comic Book Day just a couple days ago for cover price. And it's still selling for around cover price plus shipping, but there's some outlier sales of as high as $25. And it seems the asking price on eBay is starting to creep up to around $20. It's sold out at most retailers and at distributor level, so this could be a book on the rise. But it's not quite enough yet to know whether it's a hot book, so it lands right here on the honorable mention list. Yeah, I agree with Stein on this pick because I don't know what would be causing it to spike like this. I mean, is it the artist with Sarah Pacelli? Is it this flower variant? Is it Storm being on the cover? I don't know. But a regular price book, seeing those outlier sellers with $25 might be something to take notice of. Definitely one you should be on the lookout for if you're at your LCS and you see it sitting on the rack for cover price. I'd grab it. So now that we've talked about the honorable mentions, it's time to get into the Hot 10 Comics of the Week. And coming in at number 10, we have Coffin Bound number one. This isn't just the normal number one. This is the Ashcan comic that was limited to 400 copies. This book, like our last honorable mention, just came out this week for New Comic Book Day. And we're already seeing the regular cover go for twice cover price. But this one, limited to 400 only shows up in a few listings and is trading already for $100. I know last night when we were talking about this during the Bolo show, we were talking about some of these sales figures. We didn't see too many of these Ashcan listings for good reason. We know right now it's limited to 400 copies. But we also know there's a couple store exclusives and a fried pie variant, but this is the one you want to be on the lookout for, definitely. And heading the list at number nine this week, we have Avengers Unplugged number five. Recently seeing sales of a 9.8 go for $300. What is going on with this book, Jack? Well, Brian, this is the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as Proton. And we saw in the Captain Marvel movie, she had that call sign Proton on the fighter jet. And a lot of people are speculating that we are going to see this character in the future in the MCU. 
whether it's on the Disney Plus series or a future movie. We're also seeing 9.6s trade for over $100, and raw copies go for $10 to $15. But it's real important to note, this was a 99-cent Marvel release. These books tended to be marketed to kids, and they are really tough to get in good condition, which is why you're seeing the high price for those 9.8 and 9.6 copies. So being 99 cents and being marketed for all ages, definitely see the point. A lot of these kids bought these. Just like you hear the stories from your grandparents when they collected comics, that's just kids buying these comics, rolling them up, reading them and tossing them away, getting these in high grade, proves why a 9.8 just sold for $300. Now, the next book on this list, we saw this get popular a few years ago, especially with Guardians of the Galaxy movies, rumors of Warlock showing up, but we're talking about Thor number 165. That's right, Brian. This is the first appearance of him. And of course, we know that Adam Warlock is coming in some form or fashion, and this book is trading all over the place this week. We've seen grades as low as 6.0 selling for 350 to a high of 8.5 selling for 1,000. I'm honestly surprised there isn't more talk about Adam Warlock in the spec community right now since we know it's an inevitability in the future of the MCU. Because you had that extra scene, you saw the so-called cocoon, but another good reason why those high-grade books are demanding those prices is that black cover on there. Every flaw is going to show on it, so getting that, especially the year it was released, makes that hard to get in high grade, and the book is hot, and that's why it comes in at number eight this week. And heading the list at number seven this week, we have Once in Future number one, but we're talking about the Diamond Retailer Preview Edition. Yeah, Brian, this is a book that isn't even really out for general release yet, and it's already making waves on the secondary market. This book was trading for $25 and is now seeing sales as high as $75, with asking prices as high as $175. The book has already sold out a distributor level in, for the first print, sold out a distributor level for the second print, and has already been solicited for a third printing. And if you're a regular viewer on this channel, we had that interview with the Rune Singh from Boom Studios. He talked about how highly anticipated this book was, and now we're seeing it come to fruition. Absolutely, Brian. You even cut a micro content video just talking about this book from that interview. And if you haven't got a chance to watch it yet, I suggest all of you watch it before this book hits stands for New Comic Book Day. And hitting us at number six this week, this is a book we've talked about before, but it is hot again. And we are talking about Thor. God of Thunder number two. This is, of course, the first appearance of Gore the God Butcher. And there are a lot of internet rumors that Gore could be the next villain in the upcoming Thor movie. MCU rumors are driving sales of raw copies to $30 to $40, with a variant sale as high as $100. And did I mention a 9.8 for $7.50? That's crazy, because you're talking about a book that came out not too long ago, and it's just the regular cover. We're not talking about some type of incentive variant. No, But MCU rumors are driving the speculation market right now, Brian. And I remember just a few weeks ago, Toe for the Mass Speculator talked about this very character on the Hot and Cold show. So if you're speculating on this issue and the character Gore the God Butcher, I'd also take a look at issue number five and issue number six from this Thor God of Thunder run where you get the origin and some great cover appearances from Gore. And at number five this week, we're talking about a book that was just released. We're talking about Absolute Carnage number one, but not just anyone. We're talking about the two per store premiere variant. Yeah, that's the thing, Brian. A lot of stores went heavy on Absolute Carnage, but it didn't matter whether you ordered two copies or 2,000. You got two per store. And that makes these more limited than a lot of the high ratio variants like the one in 100. Even stores that did store exclusives with print runs as high as three to 5,000 only received two. And that's why you're seeing this book trend upwards to 40 to $50. And jumping in at number four this week from Red 5 Comics, we have Dark Age number one, but we're talking about the one in 10 incentive variant. Yeah, Brian, this one in 10 incentive is red hot on the market, hitting $30 right out the gate just a couple days after New Comic Book Day. This was a highly anticipated release from Red 5 Comics, and Red 5 Comics is on fire as a publisher with two straight weeks with a book landing on the comicbookinvest.com Hot 10 Comics list. Now, personally, I can see why this book is gaining on the secondary market, because that incentive cover by Nicholas Eli is absolutely gorgeous. And the buzz has been building since Free Comic Book Day when Red 5 released that Free Comic Book Day edition of The Dark Age. It's important to note that in a post-Umbrella Academy world, if this book takes off, you got to go back to that free comic book day issue as it will probably be deemed the first appearance by the market. 
And one other book to look out for this issue is that ash can from Comics Pro. So here we are. We're inside the top three hot 10 comics of the week. And in at number three is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Now, we're not talking the IDW series. We're talking the original, the first appearance of the Turtles themselves. Now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has been red hot in the market. It's been issue number 95, issue 96, anticipation for 97 with that build up to 100. But again, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about issue number one from the original series coming in with a sale of a 9.8 for $90,000. <laughs> this has shocked most of the speculation market, but really should it? The turtles are in high demand right now. And the question is, is this the ceiling, Brian? I don't think so. Maybe two or three years ago, right after Baltimore Comic Con, a bunch of us were talking in Google Hangouts, and there was a high-grade CGC Turtles number one, and it was being sold for 24000 I thought that was crazy at the time, but to see this go for 90000 there's no telling where the ceiling is on this one. The popularity of Turtles is here to stay, and it has solidified its place in pop culture history. Moving into number two this week, we have Dead End Kids number one. Now, this comes from Source Point Press. Now, we've already seen Two entries on this comicbookinvest.com hot 10 comics list that have come from independent publishers that released their books just this past new comic book day. This being the third was the most in demand of the three. This book reads like a property made to be adapted and has been compared to things like Stranger Things and Stand By Me. Part of the reason why you're seeing those prices escalate on this book a lot of comic book shops did not order or did not have it in. So naturally, you're seeing the demand higher than the supply for this book, and that's why it's number two on the list. Now, before we get into the number one pick on the Hot 10 Comics this week, we have a giveaway for Simple Man's Comics family and CBSI Nation. What do we have for them this week, Jack? Well, Brian, this week, we've got a twofer. I'm talking two variants with one contest. A lot of you may not know that at comicbookinvest.com, we produce our own exclusive variants. Here we have two Fault Vintage retailer exclusive variants created by Ben C and the team at comicbookinvest.com available right here today. We've got Queen of Bad Dreams number one and Sarah and the Royal Stars number one, homaging two Golden Age greats with Detective Comics 31 and Wonder Woman number one, respectively. All you have to do is be sure to be subscribed to the channel, make sure you like the video, and comment down below. In the final video, not the live premiere, with your favorite independent comic ongoing or miniseries. Yes, like he said, there's so many great independent comic publishers out there right now. So comment down below because I'm dying to see what everyone's favorite is. And with that being said, we are rolling into the number one pick for the Hot 10 Comics this week. And we're talking about Werewolf by Night number 32. Speculation is running rampant that Moon Knight is on his way to the MCU. We know that the MCU is going horror with the upcoming Doctor Strange movie and the big Blade announcement. Tomb of Dracula number 10 has gone nuclear, and I think some of that residual heat is rubbing off on this Moon Knight first appearance. We've got a 7.0 this week trading for $1,000, and multiple sites are reporting different rumors with Marvel casting. I'm talking Andrew Garfield, we're talking Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and one of the Russo brothers stating that he wants Keanu Reeves. Yes, exactly like you said, Jack. It has been at least five years now that we started hearing rumors about how Moon Knight was going to be coming to Netflix. Now we're hearing about a possible movie. But due to those rumors, this has always been a popular book. But if these rumors keep gaining that momentum, this will be one book that quickly finds itself out of a lot of people's reach. And if that happens, Brian, I really wonder if the popularity surrounding Mark Spector will bleed over to that first solo series similar to what we saw with Blade. Time will tell, but I'd be on the lookout for that one. I couldn't agree more, Jack. And that's why this book has found itself in the top spot on the Hot 10 Comics this week. So thank you to Ben Stein, the writer and author of the CBSI Hot 10 Comics list on comicbookinvest.com. The Hot 10 Comics list gets 47,000 unique views on comicbookinvest.com on a weekly basis, far surpassing any amount of YouTube hits that we or anyone else could get. But we will continue to do our best to do this list justice and bring it to you on a weekly basis on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. The official channel of CBSI and comicbookinvest.com. I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Remember, buy what you like, 
And that way, you'll always be happy with your collection. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. All the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. Stop. For the record.